everyone and welcome to the Lay Throm channel. In our videos we cover filming tips, tricks and techniques, equipment and product reviews and many other things that will help you in the world of filmmaking and photography. Check out our videos and don't forget to subscribe. Hello everybody my name is Matt and welcome back to the Lay Throm channel. Glad to see you uh, kicking along. Today we are going to be talking about something that I get asked on a regular occasion from students, from, you know, independents. It is a very common question and it comes down to what video editing program or software should I use? Well, to be quite frankly, this is an open-ended question. Everybody has, uh, you know, to the each their own, everybody has their own opinion, everybody has what they like, so on and so forth. But for the question at hand, I'll give you a little bit of information. And we're going to start out with Hit Film 3. Now, as you can see on the desktop here, I have Hit Film 3 Pro, but we're going to talk about the basic. The basic does have some uh, missing features to it. Uh, for instance, um, a lot of, if you're trying to do certain uh, 3D compositing things in HitFilm Express, you're going to be a little limited. Uh, a lot of your uh, denoi your like your Pro Denoiser, Pro Chroma Key, obviously is only going to come in the Pro version. You could buy those separately, I believe. Uh, you're not allowed to run a 16-bit rendering. You're limited to uh, 1080. So anybody who's running like 2.5K, 4K, you are kind of screwed on that. Open EXR, Open FX is only available for Pro. However, you also have the ability to basically, let me bring this up over here. You have the ability to spend a little bit of money and get some, you know, add-ons, which is actually not too bad when you think about it instead of paying a crap ton of money all up front. I mean, you have your starter pack, you have, you know, premium formats, AV pack, colorist pack, damage pack, destruction pack, film looks, repair, pro light flares. I mean, the list goes on. They start out at about 10 bucks and work their way up to about 100. This is essentially the cheapest, easiest, and quickest way to get started in editing video. Because, like I said, you can get Hit Film Express for free. Now, it wasn't a joke, that wasn't a pun, you know, no misdirection or anything. You can get it for free. And one of the great things about it is, is you have the ability to not only edit video, but you also have the ability to do some 3D compositing. As you can see right here, make composite shot. I mean, it, it's one of those things that is quite beneficial when you really think about it. The downside to all of this is if you just want to say screw it and go all out, HitFilm 3 Pro is about 300 bucks. Now, I understand that's not exactly cheap, and trust me, I completely understand that, but it if you start out with the Express and then you go from there, it is the cheapest route. Second would have to be Premiere. As you can see, between HitFilm and Premiere, they look quite similar. I mean, it's not all that bad. It's not all that different. Just my opinion. But with Premiere, it's a little bit different, mainly because you can uh, stagger this a little bit. Now, if you just wanted the single app, you can get you know the Creative Cloud 2015, if you're not a student, it's about 20 bucks a month. If you are a student, you can basically get the entire Creative Cloud suite for $20 a month. And that comes with a lot of stuff. This is, you know, Premiere, Photoshop, Illustrator, Acrobat, After Effects, InDesign, InCopy. I mean, all of that is your is essentially what you're getting for you know, $20 a month if you're a student. If you are not a student and you wanted the entire thing, you're looking at about $50 a month. Actually, let me bring this over here real quick. 
and I'll just show you. Makes it easy. So if you were just into photography, you wanted Photoshop, maybe Lightroom, it's about $10 a month. Single app, whether it's you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, you know, in this case, Premiere, it's about $20 a month. Now granted, keep in mind, this is all if you are not a student. The complete package, 50 bucks a month, and if you wanted Adobe stock added on to that, it's about $80 a month, which seems kind of high, but at the same time, if you're going through a lot of stock footage, you know, a lot of stock photos and everything like that, it's actually really cheap. If you're a business and you haven't went, you know, with Adobe in the past, you're just starting out, you're looking at about $70 a month per license. If you were a student, like I said, you're looking at about $10 a month for just photography, $20 a month for the entire Smash, and, of course, they also have things for schools and universities. It's not that hard. If you are a student, all you need is your student email address, and you're pretty much in like Flynn. I'm going to refrain from talking about the perpetual license system, mainly because it seems like CC is here to stay, and that's what everybody's turning. But to give you an idea, if you wanted to get a hold of the Master Collection CS6, you're looking at, I believe, uh, around, somewhere in the ballpark of $2,500 for all the programs that you get, essentially for either you know 50 bucks a month if you're a non-student or $20 a month if you are a student. Going on from there, you also have Vegas. Now, I'm not a big fan of Vegas anymore. Sony Vegas has been around for quite some time. Before it was bought out by Sony, it was actually owned by somebody else. That's about the time frame where I used it. I still have it. I don't really use it very often. I mean, I, I'm just not a big fan of it anymore. Now, I will say that even though I don't really care for Vegas, I will give it a little bit of credit where credit is due. It seems to be a little bit better optimized. I mean, it, if you need a rough edit cut and you're pressed for time, it is not exactly hard to get it done a little bit quicker in Vegas than you would Premiere. But in all reality, that's... I don't want to say that is it, but that's its crowning achievement, I guess you would say. All in all, the long story short of Vegas is basically anything that you could do in Premiere, you could... Most of the stuff, I should say, that you could do in Premiere, you could do in Vegas, and vice versa. There are a few things that you can do in Premiere that you can't do in Vegas. Um, a lot of 3D work is... Well, I don't want to say 3D work because that is kind of... We'll just say there's a few things that you can do in Premiere you can't do in Vegas. On top of that, bring this back over here. If you go with just the 13 edit, you're looking at about $400. Vegas Pro 13, you're looking at about 6 They also have other stuff like uh, Movie Studio, which is about 50 bucks, which isn't too bad, but you're really limited on some of the stuff that you could do. And Movie Studio 13, which is about $140. The, Sony does have options. Don't get me wrong. But it is one of those things that if I had to flip the coin and I had to pick and choose which one that I would use on a regular basis and I didn't have, uh, you know, the money to throw around for, you know, anything really. If I didn't have the money for a Creative Cloud, I wasn't a student, so on and so forth, I would probably go the route of Hit Film Express. Reason being is that I could do both editing and a little bit of comp work with no problem whatsoever. It is a nice and powerful uh, you know, software package, but at the same time, like I said, you can get it for free and use it to your heart's content. Granted, you are limited in some areas, but it's not as bad. Now, some of the, you guys may realize that I'm working on a Windows PC here. Not so much a Hackintosh or a Mac. Obviously, my laptop is a different story. You know, if you're running a Mac, you can go ahead and get Final Cut if you wish. That is all entirely up to you. I did not include, you know, Final Cut in this purposely, mainly because... When you're really looking at it, 
a lot of the people that have come across and asked me this question have been PC users. They have been strapped for the cash. And I figured I would just give this, you know, information out there. That way people know what their, what their options are. But that's really all I have for this. I'm going to try and tie up this video. I'm already at 10 minutes long. But I'm going to tie it up right here, right now. There will be a video in the near future kind of doing the whole comparison between uh, Hit Film, After Effects, and Nuke. You know, your main VFX packages. But th that's very, very... Yeah, that's a completely different video. But that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. I will have links to all these different programs thrown in the description as well. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I will see you guys later.